I'm pretty sure that this is one of the most famous questions in algebra, but in a bad way. Yes, it's this one right here. And let me put it down right here for you guys first. X plus Y squared. And of course, the most famous wrong answer for this is X squared plus Y squared. Man, how can we actually do this legitimately though? Well, even though this is an algebra question, but we can actually use geometry to do this. Check this out. First, we are going to define x to be this length right here. And if this is x, then we can also say this right here is also x. And we can form a square. And the area of this square is just going to be x times x, namely x to the second power, namely x squared. Uh -huh. Now, for the y, let's say this much is y. And you see, the whole thing going from here to here will just be x plus y. Likewise, let's just go ahead and do that right here. So on the side, we also have x plus y. And now we are going to form a square. So let's go ahead and do that right here. Well, as you can see though, here is y, here is y. So this right here has the area y squared. We do have the x squared plus y squared already, but we are still missing this and that, right? This rectangle has the area of what? x times y. So we'll just put that down as xy. Likewise, this is also x times y. So you see, this right here, we need to have 2xy. And this is actually really cool, because we can actually use geometry to prove this identity. Also, this picture only works when x and y are positive numbers, right? But it's pretty cool right, already. Now, I have a question for you guys. Can we actually use calculus to prove this identity? Of course, the answer is yes, because otherwise, how can we continue this video, right? Well, let me give you guys a setup first. It all depends on what definitions that we are going to use. So check this out. You see earlier, I gave you guys a definition for x. It's just going from here to here, right? So let me give you guys a definition for x first. Let's say x, in particular, x to the first power, right? This right here, we are going to define this as the integral. Why integral? I will tell you guys more later on. The integral going from 0 to x. And then inside here, we'll just be integrating 1. And then let's use the dummy variable t. So we have dt right here. So keep that in mind, x is defined in terms of this integral. Now, I will give you guys a definition for x to the second power. And right here, this is going to be the integral going from 0 to x as well. And the inside is going to be 2t dt. Here's the challenge. We have these two definitions. I would like to ask you guys, can we prove the identity x plus y squared being equal to x squared plus y squared plus 2xy with these two definitions. And because I know the majority of you guys do not pause the video and try it, but I really want you guys to try it. So the best way for me to do it is, I'm not going to show you guys how to do it. <laughs> However, no, don't, don't, don't cut it off this video, please. <laughs> I will give you guys the classic example. And this is actually how I got the idea of this question. I will do that for you guys, and you guys will do this one on your own, right? So, that's the deal. Here is the idea. Why did we put x and x squared in terms of integrals? Well, the truth is, they are functions. They are defined in terms of integrals. The classic example is the following. Yes, natural log of x. Classically speaking, historically speaking, Natural log of x is defined as the integral going from 1 to x. And then we will have 1 over t here, dt. Isn't ln x just the inverse of e to the x? Yeah, you can take that as a definition, but historically speaking, we do define ln x in terms of integral. And in fact, there are a lot more other functions, such as the error function, such as the gamma function. They are all defined in terms of an integral, right? And for simplicity purpose, I'm just going to focus on x is greater than 1. 
all right? Even though, of course, we can have like one half instead of the natural log, but let's say x is greater than one right here. Well, we do know the following though. From our algebra or pre-calculus class, we do know that ln of x times y, this right here is just equal to ln x plus ln y, right? But how can we prove this? Well, yes, you can use an algebra proof for this, but if you take this as your definition, then you really have to use this as your definition to do your proof. And I'll show you guys how to do that. And hopefully after that, you will be able to do that on your own, all right? All right, so check this out. Again, let's say x and y are both greater than one. This is how the proof goes. PF for proof, ln of x, y, let's write that down first. Well, we have to use our definition. This is our input. Earlier the input goes here, right? So now, ln of x, y, this is just equal to the integral going from one to x, y, and then we have the one over t, dt. Good, that's the setup. At least we're making some progress. But now the question is, how can we continue? Ah, oh, man. One to x, y, that's kind of weird. Um, take a look right here. We know that we must have ln x, right? Meaning that we must see the integral going from one to x later on. Let me write that down first. I'm going to write that down as integral going from one to x. And then let's put on the inside as well, which we have one over t dt. But the problem is, this is of course not equal to that. However, we do have some properties of definite integrals that we can use, right? Yeah. Which one can we use? If we go from 1 to x, then we can actually just go from x to xy. And then, of course, that's right on the inside, 1 over t dt. And you see, the whole thing here will be equal to 1 to xy, like this integral right here. All right? So this is just the integral property. And this is going to be done. It's just L and X. But now, how can we take care of this though? Well, perhaps one of the, perhaps the most powerful technique in integration is U substitution. So let's do some U sub right here. U should be a function of T right here. So let me put that down. But keep that in mind though, this right here is when T is equal to X. And in order for us to use this definition, the integral, the integral should go from 1 to whatever, right? So, we have x right here already. How can I end up with 1? Yeah, just divide it by x. Right? Good. So let's continue. Multiply x on both sides. We know t is equal to x times u. Differentiate both sides. dt will be... x is just a constant in this situation. So we will just have x and the derivative of u, right? Just put on the u for that. So now, let's take this integral to the u world. Okay, here, x, x is the starting, so you put it here. So we know u will be starting at one. And then if you put x, y into here, divided by x, u will be end up at y. Very nice, huh? Look at this. Here we have one over t, which is x u, d t is x d u. Ah, have a look. The x and x cancel out precisely. So this is just the integral going from one to y, one over u d u, and u is just a dummy variable. Doesn't matter. This is the same as that, but we just use y right here. So we are done. Ladies and gentlemen, this right here gives us ln x. This right here gives us ln y. And do we need plus c? No. So, as you can see, this is how we can prove this log property by using this integral definition for the natural log. Now, it's your turn to prove this identity by using this integral definition, all right? And leave a comment down below once you are done. And yes, I'll still make another video for you guys. Just check the link in the description, right? Okay, as always, that's it.